to the next segment of our agenda today. So like I said, we're going to get to learn more about um, our cybersecurity bootcamp. And this bootcamp has been made possible by um, our partner, that is uh, CompTIA Global. And um, allow me to introduce uh, Benjamin and Ambuki. Uh, so Benjamin has over 15 years of experience in the IT training and certification sector. And he's currently the business development manager at CompTIA. And he has really helped us, um, you know, in, in making this curriculum and program possible. Um, so CompTIA is the leading provi uh, provider of vendor neutral IT certifications in the world. I'm so sure you've seen um, a couple of certifications that are provided by this body. And Benjamin's role is to help IT professionals and organizations in East and West Africa to become knowledgeable and competent to meet industry demands of the 21st century and beyond. So Benjamin has worked with a couple of um, tech organizations is going to share that with us in a few. Tell us a bit about his background and day-to-day -day at CompTIA. And he'll also take us through what CompTIA does and how we came about partnering and working together to offer this cybersecurity course, which we'll tell you about more in detail a bit later. So without much further ado, Benjamin, please, um, you can take it up from here. Um, you know, I'm so sure the participants are very interested to know who is this Benjamin and why CompTIA? Why, why are we working with CompTIA out of all the certific cybersecurity certification bodies in the world? So welcome, Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sasha. Uh, please confirm if you can hear me okay. Yes, can hear you. All right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be here. Uh, thank you, Sasha and team, for organizing for today's session. Uh, indeed, it's been um, it's been a long time since we started talking about it. I'm glad that it has come to pass. Yeah. So I am Benjamin. I represent, I'm the CompTIA representative in the region. I take care of uh, East, West Africa. I call the region Middle Africa. And my role is to represent CompTIA by working with partners such as Moringa in working out what are the relevant uh, curriculums that they need to offer so that they can meet the need of the current workforce. And uh, we, you know, you, you talked about uh, what is my typical day to day. Um, I will be speaking with partners across the region, uh, such as Moringa, or I will be having meetings with uh, certain uh, individuals in a government, let's say in Rwanda or West Africa. And we'll be planning about how they need to create a roadmap to create uh, the next uh, specialists in cybersecurity, in infrastructure, in the different areas in data. And as we have those conversations from CompTIA, we say that we do not compete, we complement. How we do this is from what you've said earlier that we provide vendor neutral certifications and these vendor neutral certifications are basically um, we prepare you from a vanilla uh, perspective. Let me explain. If you're looking at the cloud, if you're looking at networking, uh, we know that there are many vendors. So security is another area. Instead of focusing on a particular vendor or a particular product, we focus on what uh, does that foundation for you to become a cloud expert, for you to become that networking expert, for you to become that security analyst. What is that background, that foundation that you need to build? So that is what we pride ourselves in as CompTIA. 
and uh, I look forward to working with Moringa as you prepare people to go into the workforce and they offer the relevant skills and uh, what is required by the current and the modern uh, workplace. Okay, thank you so much, Benjamin. All right, so if you have questions around CompTIA, please prepare them. And because Benjamin is here and he's going to address them. We also have Licio Lentimo. Um, so Licio is, um, Licio wears many, so many hats. <laughs> I know, I know he's just introduced himself very briefly, but I find him to be a very interesting um, person. He's also my colleague here at Moringa, but he is, his background is in software engineering. Then um, he pivoted into becoming a cybersecurity engineer. Um, so he's a certified um, cybersecurity specialist and currently our um, a curriculum engineer here at Moringa School. So he's part of the team um, that has worked very closely um, and tirelessly to build out our cybersecurity program um, curriculum. So be rest assured that um, whatever we curate here at Moringa, it is well thought out and there are experts um, behind it. All right, so right now we're going to get into our panel discussion, let me call it that. And I'm just gonna ask uh, Benjamin and Licio um, to have their videos on. I have a couple of questions for them. So can I help us tackle this topic today around um, navigating the cybersecurity landscape? Okay, all right. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type them on the chat box. We want this to be very interactive again. So just type them on the chat box, I'll be able to see them and direct them either to Benjamin or Licio will be able to respond and tackle all the questions around cybersecurity that will come up today. All right, so Licio, are you on board? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Okay, awesome. All right, so I think I'll start with you, Licio. Um, maybe just tell us um, what sparked your interest in cybersecurity. Like I've seen, um, like I've said, uh, you have a background in software engineering, mobile, cloud, and all that. But why specifically cybersecurity, and how did you get started in this field? Um, thank you very much, Sasha. For me, actually, I started out uh, during COVID. Um, it presented an opportunity for me. And there uh, are many things that fascinate me about cybersecurity. Um, uh, first off is uh, the ever-changing nature of the field. Uh, cybersecurity is a constantly evolving field with uh, new threats and dark vectors that emerge all the time, uh, meaning that there is always something new to learn and uh, new challenges to overcome. Also, I'd like uh, like to stay ahead of the curve, as cyber, crimin cyber criminals are constantly developing new ways to attack their systems and networks. Um, but as well as the importance of the work, cybersecurity is essential in protecting our critical infrastructure, financial systems, and personal data. And overall, I'm fascinated by the challenge, importance, and a variety of cybersecurity. I believe that is a field that is essential to the future of our the world and I'm excited to be part of it. Yeah, yeah awesome. That's an interesting trajectory. And what about you, Benjamin? Um, how did you land on CompTIA? Like you have over 10 years of experience in the IT field. Um, just very curious to know why did you pick CompTIA and focus on cybersecurity? Right. Um so my background is is going to sound interesting uh, for the likes of uh, uh, those who are like Lizio who went to development. Uh, my, my career started off in development, right? I am one of those people who uh, I think no, no one here 
from the from, from the chat and from listening i don't think any of you learned how to code using notepad as in you have learned the programming language okay good <laughs> all right so uh, i come from that generation where uh, i did a diploma in software engineering and it was very thorough and I did a few projects here there that uh, could be the story of uh, some of the people in the audience where after learning a language or two and you start, you know, a side hustle uh, to create, uh, to, to work on projects and make money. Uh, so that was my trajectory. And then I stumbled onto a teaching opportunity. I became an instructor. Now, because of the background, uh, just learning how to code for two years, uh, I felt disadvantaged because I did not understand about hardware that much. So that is when I discovered CompTIA. Uh, they have a very good course that introduces you to uh, hardware and software, how they operate, how do you troubleshoot. So um, I am a self-taught um, hardware, software uh, person. So I did my first certification, my first ever uh, technology certification. It was a CompTIA certification. We call it A+, uh, basically hardware and software. Uh, and it was very tough preparing, you know, getting the content and sitting for this uh, exam, the online exam, not just like you go to a college and you do an internal exam. Uh, so, and with that now I was, you know, it opened up curiosity. I grew into other areas. I was still an instructor. Uh, so uh, I grew now into, curiosity grew into, okay, let's look at uh, networking a bit more. You know, how do you set up a network and so on? So I became a, uh, back then it was, uh, we used to have a certification called MCSE. Uh, so where you did some seven different subjects and you became a systems administrator. So I became a systems administrator. I focused on uh, the mail system, uh, Microsoft Exchange. It was Microsoft oriented. I went ahead and uh, I was a systems engineer. I was posted to, uh, to KQ. The company I was working for was given a contract where they would send different people to handle different things. There was a team for hardware. There was a team for uh, other applications. I was managing the exchange. Uh, so uh, then I was still, so that, that time I took a break like from teaching and I went now into systems administration, but still training was still in me and I grew into uh, managing teams, delivering training, uh, speaking, having those conversations. I was talking about what I do today. You have an organization that wants to upskill hundreds of people and they need to come up with a plan or there is funding and they need to execute training. So that, that's how I, I got to grow. Now, when it comes to the area of cybersecurity, I am more of um, uh, interested in the awareness for the end users, all right? Uh, for, for the end users, because that is where it begins. Without that knowledge, without that understanding uh, of, you know, how a threat can become or develop into something serious, then uh, you will you will end up treating a bigger a bigger issue or uh, handling a bigger loss. So so that is uh, how I have grown through my career. And today, representing CompTIA is uh, something that I like to do because. I get to have those interesting conversations where um, CompTIA, like I mentioned, it is vendor neutral. So when I'm working with these organizations, when I'm working with partners, we are able to say what is the right framework or the right approach of where should these people begin their training and where should they end up? You know, which pathway are they following? So that's uh, what I can say to that question. 
Okay, thank you, Benjamin. Very interesting um, journey there. <laughs> um, great. So um, I'll pass this still to you, Benjamin, because um, you said like, um, you know, you've handled different projects for different companies, right? Before now you um, got to Coptia and are helping people with training and just, um, you know, becoming cybersecurity specialists. Um, what can you say um, around like how the cybersecurity landscape has evolved over the years? Um, like from years past till now, where is, um, how has cybersecurity um, evolved? And what are those trends that you are noticing now in organizations, be it big organizations with data, um, with the onset of like social media and everything that's happening? Um, what, what are your two cents on that? All right, um, so what has changed? What uh, has happened over time? Well, um, uh, we can say that accessibility has increased, okay? Uh, because what has driven, you know, cybersecurity to be uh, something that we all need to pay attention to. So accessibility of tools, uh, has increased. You know, everyone now, uh, majority of the people have got uh, smartphones, not just a phone, but smartphones. There are more applications uh, to be used. You know, every other day right now, no one can, if, if we start, if we do a poll here about what app do you use for managing expenses? what um, tool do you use for managing your timetable? You know, for anything, there's almost an app for everything uh, from entertainment to doing life, to planning, you know, projects. So uh, I'm saying that one of the things that has happened definitely over time is accessibility. But with this accessibility to devices, gadgets, uh, accessibility to you can get any software you want free you don't necessarily have to spend money on it uh, so we've got like a little bit of everything for everyone now uh, with that accessibility now come uh, these other trends where people have seen there's a market here uh, I'll give a very uh, common example from a Kenyan context uh, if we were to do a poll here, which we actually can, uh, I don't know if uh, you, you can uh, find out to set it up very quickly, uh, who here has received a text or uh, a call from someone you're sure is a scammer. Those messages that uh, you receive and uh, someone will follow up with a call and say, uh, I have sent you money by mistake, you know, uh, out, out of uh, how many are we? We are 53. Out of 53, uh, if, yeah, I think we can we can count the hands or you can create a poll, uh, a very high percentage of people will say they have. So what is the reasoning behind this? This scamming, if I can call it the scamming, has become an industry. There are people sitting somewhere they have some very little input in terms of credit or airtime. Um, and thank God that we have, uh, what are they, what have they been, the, the different entities in government and service providers have also not tightened uh, the, some, certain aspects of their services such that you cannot just purchase a SIM card without registering and so on. So there is a trail, right? So, so in as much as, uh, the accessibility has increased of, uh, of from, from one side. There is also the people sitting and minting money. I don't know whether to call it minting money or taking advantage of the situation, you know, of that accessibility. They know that here, if I just collect information, I collect numbers, I go and take a picture of some book that people have filled in their details, uh, I will not miss uh, a certain amount of money by the end of the day. And they will keep that. Like uh, I keep telling my wife, um, 
that um, I think I am on that list of scammers. You know, I am in their database because every time they will have something new, I will be on that call. You know, they will call me. They will call me. They will text me. You know, from uh, we have, of course, LinkedIn is there, so people can look you up, right? And they know, okay, this guy is doing something related to training. So someone will call me and pretend to be from a certain university. Uh, there's something they want us to discuss. Uh, but then we end up discussing about how I need to send them some money so that they can send me some documentation. So everyone is affected. So uh, what, what I'm, I'm saying is that in as much as accessibility has increased, uh, people have made it an industry. So social engineering is, is, is employed here to try and access those people who are vulnerable and we are all vulnerable, right? Now, besides this, uh, something else is happening. Looked into uh, on, a, on a serious level right now by the players who are affected, where if you collect data, then there has to be ways of you showing that you are protecting this data. Should this data be be uh, you know, found misused, you know, there are consequences. Uh, should you uh, discover that you've lost uh, data or it was breached, then you have a process to follow of informing the people that uh, we discovered this and this is what has happened, this many people are affected, and this is what we are doing about it. So uh, those are just some of the things that have happened. Now, on the other hand, uh, there seems to be that there are other trends. For example, uh, automation, we talk about automation. Uh, and let me put it uh, differently. There is AI, everyone knows about AI. So the question is, is it replacing us, right? That question, uh, the answer can be yes and no. Uh, because when you come to look at who is going to get replaced, then the first category of, of people or candidates are going to be those who do repetitive, uh, you know, repetitive things, you know, doing the same old thing. That is uh, an aspect that is a good candidate for getting replaced by AI, by automation, right? Now, the next question will be, who does not get replaced? Someone or a role where you need to apply some human uh, aspects of, um, you know, sympathy, you know, um, where, where you cannot replace that human touch, right? So that leads us now to um, that, that trend of automation, uh, rise in AI, uh, internet of everything, internet of things. Uh, these other emerging technologies lead us now to a level where we have to figure out how do we work with that AI? How do we make sure that there is some level of collaboration um, with whatever is coming up, with that automation? How do you become part of it? And I always say this uh, to, to that uh, particular aspect, to those who may still be unsure whether, uh, you know, you will be replaced or your role will be replaced. Think about the autopilot. We've all, even if you've never flown, you must have heard of autopilot, even in movies at least. Uh, there's a feature called autopilot. When it came up, then... Um, uh, I think uh, th there is a chat there. You need to activate uh, text because there's someone who uh, yeah. who says that, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I was talking about uh, when the autopilot feature came in, it is not that the pilot said, now we've lost it. We have to look for other jobs. We have to go and become drivers. Uh, they have remained. Uh, autopilot came in. It simply helps the, the pilot become more efficient. When they engage autopilot, they can be doing other things that are equally important. It is not a replacement. So similarly, with these trends, we should look for ways that uh, can use that. How can we blend this with whatever else we need to do? Now, the other trend is uh, a very clear picture of 
the skills gap. You know, there's a skills gap discussion here where we have, if we can look again at our Kenyan context, we have people who have learned how to use Microsoft Word or uh, uh, Excel, you know, or they can switch on a computer and switch it off. And they either allow people to brand them as, as IT practitioners, right? Um, we, we have that aspect and it has led to when there is a hiring process, the person doing the hiring does not maybe subject the candidate to a proper due diligence to just ascertain, do they have the skills that are relevant for this role, right? Uh, I mean, it can happen in various ways. It may not even be at the time of hiring. It might just be this organization grew. At one time, they were using a specific software and this person um, was in a certain department and they knew how to support a specific software in the organization. But with time, that project ended and this person somehow remained as the IT guy, right? They may not have the right skills. So what I'm saying is that uh, one of the trends that has happened is uh, we have that, those gaps that have been exposed. Um, we, we, in a Kenyan context, you can call them juakali. You know, juakali practices when it comes to uh, ascertaining whether someone has got the right skills. Uh, I could go on and on, but that, that is just to highlight some of the things that have happened. Okay. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, uh, Steve, could you please assist me just set up um, the feature for Abdul, uh, for Harisu Ahmad? Um, I'm not quite sure how to do that, but please just uh, assist and also just uh, help me also just get to the questions that are coming in. Okay, um, so thank you so much, Benjamin, um, uh, for sharing those highlights. Um, to you, Lisio, um, what would you say are the most pressing cybersecurity threats and challenges that organizations are facing today? I know Benjamin has touched on the aspect of as individuals, um, you know, like we are subject to data breaching, um, mobile app security, social engineering, and all that. But maybe from an organization point of view, what are those um, threats or challenges you've seen um, organizations facing today? And what can they do um, to just mitigate those cyber threats? Um, uh, thank you, Sasha. And as uh, Benjamin had mentioned, uh, the attack surface has now increased with uh, everyone having a mobile phone, a laptop, probably some IoT device like a camera. And uh, they pose significant risks to organizations. And uh, they are also emerging threats that come up as well. So as uh, one of the most common is ransomware, which is a cash cow for these attackers. And ransom, ransomware uh, involves uh, encrypting an organization's data, then demanding for a ransom. And the, uh, one of the most common also is phishing and social engineering. Phishing either through email, SMS, which is also called smishing, uh, voice as well, called phishing. And cyber criminals use these de deceptive tactics to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information or clicking uh, on malicious links. Um, another threat I have noticed is uh, zero day vulnerabilities uh, where attackers exploit uh, software vulnerabilities that are unknown to the software vendor and remain unpatched. Um, this is where now you keep software systems up to date, keep uh, and implement uh, intrusion detection systems. Um, and one of the biggest attacks is uh, coming from advanced uh, persistent threats or APTs. These are the most sophisticated of them uh, that involve long-term targeted attacks by well-funded organizations and threat actors. And organizations also face uh, threats from insiders or these are, can be employees in the organization 
who are they are negligent actions by employees or insiders. Uh, so you can also mitigate this by implementing uh, uh, strict controls, monitor user activities, and uh, offering uh, education to employees on security policies and the importance of data protection. And as as I had mentioned earlier, IoT, uh, they often lack proper security controls and they normally come up with uh, zero day vulnerabilities as they don't have uh, updates. In addition, also there are cloud security risks. We are moving to the cloud and uh, some of these risks include uh, misconfigured uh, cloud services, data breaches or insider threats also can compromise uh, can compromise uh, cloud-based assets. Um, uh, I want me to also add on uh, mobile devices, that, which are also used for both work and personal uh, purposes, where you use social media, you check email, you can be vulnerable to phishing attacks, uh, SMS uh, attacks. had mentioned earlier uh, is uh, another attack vector and uh, attackers can exploit AI and machine learning systems to launch more sophisticated attacks. So let me speak on preventing these attacks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, ransomware, you can uh, backup yeah. data offline regularly, keeping software and systems up to date and employing uh, email security solutions and uh, as well as uh, employees offering training to the employees about phishing risks and uh, implementing st strong incidents uh, response plans. Uh, for things like zero day, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, keeping systems up to date uh, and also, um, uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, for attacks like phishing, you can enable MFA to protect accounts. Um, uh, there are a lot of threats out here. Yeah, so, uh, for sure. <laughs> so, so Lisa, even 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 as you're responding um to that question, I'm just thinking um especially like now I, I think you've mentioned something around um zero day uh, so do people need to have like a background in software engineering to be able to become the cyber security specialists or engineers that are handling um these threats um uh, not really for mm. zero day it's up to the vendor where an attacker has uh, found a vulnerability in a certain library or something that goes mm. unpatched that's why they offer uh, an update for those. So that is uh, on a level playing field, everyone is uh, uh, vulnerable to an attack on a zero day. Mm. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, so if you have any questions for Lisa and Benjamin, please type them on the chat box and I'll be able to direct that to them. Um, any question around cyber security that you're curious about, um, they'll be best place to respond to that. Okay, so Licia has shared a couple of, um, you know, threats that could face uh, big organizations or even small businesses. Um, so, and even you as an individual, so everyone um, is a potential uh, victim of facing a cyber threat or a cyber attack. So it's good for people to be aware. So even as much as maybe you don't want to go all the way into becoming like a cybersecurity engineer, you could be the person who's doing these cybersecurity awareness sessions. Um, even you as a business owner, as a tech team lead, um, it's good to um, sensitize yourself with these possible threats because this is the current trend that we are seeing um, in the industry right now. Okay, so moving on um, swiftly. Um, so to you, Benjamin, um, what is the importance of the ongoing cybersecurity, or rather, what is the importance of cybersecurity training for IT professionals? And what would you say to those organizations that haven't yet um, 
you know, kind of like done this awareness trainings or upskilled their tech teams um, in cybersecurity skills. What advice would you give to them to stay ahead um, of this possible threat? Right, uh, good question. So let me give you a short story. Uh, we were at a seminar and um, a certain consultant, security consultant, uh, was talking about an experience uh, in West Africa. And they talked about how they had, uh, okay, right now we have companies, uh, by the way, just for information, there are companies that monitor threats and you know produce actionable uh, reports that, uh, okay, based on the trends, your industry uh, has been having quite a number of these issues occurring and you seem to be next on the list or your industry seems to be culpable. So you need to do one, two, three uh, so that you're protected, so that you're safe. Uh, so there are companies that do that. So this particular gentleman at the seminar was uh, representing such an organization. And he talks about how uh, he had this discussion with a certain uh, C-level uh, person, you know, COO of an organization, uh, COO, CEO. He, that, those are the people that he was talking to. So he engages them uh, year one, month one. And uh some eight months down the line uh, he gets called by this uh, person to uh, to look into you know how are we 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 had this trouble and uh, we are trying to resolve it so they get advice and they sort themselves out uh, but the solutions that he had recommended and the action for this organization's IT team were not signed off because they involved some money they involved some budget which was not uh, too much, it was reasonable, right? And he knew that there was a budget. To cut the story short, uh, he gets a call one night by, you know, from this C-level person saying, you have to come, I have to meet you tonight. And uh, they meet and he shows him, I have been threatened that uh, my, my bank accounts, I cannot access my bank accounts, uh, I cannot access my personal email, and it was ransomware. It was a ransomware attack. Please do everything that you can to get my access back and to get the organization back up and running. Because the manager had now been put in a corner, uh, the budget that he refused to approve to provide some safeguards now came back triple. Because on top of uh, now the consultancy, to fix the issue, uh, there was a ransom so that they could get access back to the organization's assets, uh, IT assets. So uh, what I'm saying is this, what organizations should be doing, they should be doing certain specific tasks as advised by their teams, right? If it is patching a software, if it is an upgrade that is required because there has been a vulnerability on a specific product, then they need to invest in that, right? Uh, organizations also need to understand uh, the importance of even uh, new ways of doing things. For example, uh, the service I have talked about where organizations, uh, there, there are organizations that are doing dealing only with security and their job is to monitor uh, what are the current threats, and then providing some actionable, uh, you know, uh, report for an organization. Uh, those don't have to necessarily be within your organization if you've implemented a certain, you, you've invested in technology. They can be consultants, right? So uh, services from such organizations can be used. You can do things smartly. You don't have to hire everyone, uh, even if you just have your small little e-commerce business running. So, uh, to, to be aware about what is happening in their industry. When there were threats uh, in Kenya recently, 
uh, for you know government uh, banks and so on you you will see them maybe in certain channels uh, information we, is actually being traded on the dark web uh, for some of these organizations that have been hit and uh, let, let's even go back to the war you know ukraine um, well, what was happening there it, before it became physical or alongside the physical that you are seeing and watching on news in the background uh, some other attacks were happening right so it is important for organizations anyone any entity that has investments in technology to keep abreast of what's happening in the industry because uh, that's how you get to know how do you protect yourself uh, or yourselves uh, so vulnerabilities are quite they they happen on crazy timelines today it might be a totally unrelated uh, industry being attacked tomorrow it's going to be you, like financial institutions. They can never sleep, you know. They can never say, uh, let's not spend this money on that upgrade. Uh, so depending on the industry you're in, you need to stay alert. Uh, so that, that's for organizations. Uh, at the same time, we also have uh, something new. Well, maybe not, but um, what what is actually happening out there? If you go to uh, the level of uh, the, the collaboration of different countries, like uh, the homework for the audience, you can go and read up about the five eyes. Okay, the five eyes are uh, UK, US, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. Uh, these five eyes have some cooperation going on, right? Some cooperation where they share ideas. They do joint cyber planning where they look at, um, do we have any uh, crisis that we need to work on together? Uh, they have some level of uh, uh, information sharing and analysis so that they can integrate cyber defense operations. So this is a new approach or rather an approach that organizations can adopt. Like we say, uh, the banking industry in a certain country in Kenya, they should come together and have some level of understanding on how they can share ideas, uh, what tools can be applied, uh, what kind of uh, joint cyber security planning uh, could they have. Maybe there is a crisis that is not just facing one specific bank, it is facing uh, all the banks. So they should deliberate uh, and, and see what are the action plans that we can take up jointly? So those are just uh, some of the aspects that uh, organizations need to look into. Yeah. Mm, okay. Thank you, Benjamin. That's a really good idea. And I think that's kind of like a risk management. Maybe um, yeah. different industries here in Kenya can adopt so that like we prevent the crisis that just recently happened. Um, which you've already talked about. So I'm seeing a couple of questions here, which is tied to my next question, Benjamin. Um, so are there like specific certifications um, uh, you would recommend um, to these IT professionals, tech teams and all that? And someone asked, Vince asked, what's the difference between security and CYSA? I don't know what that stands for. Maybe you're, you're aware. So maybe could you just demystify? <laughs> and are there any free CompTIA certification? OK. All right. Uh, good questions. Uh, thank you for that. So from CompTIA, we have addressed uh, the subject of security across all our courses. Um, every course that CompTIA offers has addressed security from uh, I talked about A plus earlier, uh, you know, when you're looking at troubleshooting software hardware, you know, security is covered. There is a percentage. But now we have not just addressed from all these other subjects, we have specific uh, uh, courses where we address security in a more comprehensive manner, uh, starting with Security Plus. So Security Plus is a vendor neutral certification that is going to validate the baseline skills necessary to perform 
four security functions and pursue an IT security career. This is the beginning. This is where you get to understand uh, how do you implement security at different levels. So you, you are looking at um, uh, assessing the security posture of an enterprise. Uh, how do you monitor? How do you secure the environment? This environment can be on premise. You know, you have your your all all your your IT uh, infrastructure physically in uh, you know one one place. So how do you address? How do you monitor? How do you secure that environment if it is on the cloud? How do you monitor? How do you secure that environment? Um, Internet of Things, you know, how, so for each of these aspects of your IT deployment, you understand how do you monitor, how do you secure. Now, how will you operate with an awareness of uh, applicable laws and policies? Uh, you know, you mentioned risk, you know, uh, compliance. How, how do you operate? How do you identify? How do you analyze? How do you respond? To security events and incidents, so uh, not everything that happens is is uh, just something to. Not, not everything that happens, the services that are offered by your IT infrastructure, your your IT setup, not everything that happens is just a an oops. You know, a process needs to be in place where this this incident that happened it is categorized what kind of an issue was it right it is documented and there is a definition of how can we make sure it does not happen again right so that is what you learn in security plus which is the starting point this is relevant mm -hmm. for you whether you are uh into infrastructure if you are a systems administrator uh, you are maybe just a help desk specialist, whichever role you're in, that is relevant for you. Now, uh, CompTIA has also addressed one other element of security that um, uh, is, 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 we can say, universal. If you have created an app, if you've created uh, a software, even a website, any technology, solution that you have it needs to be checked against uh, we call it pen testing penetration testing right how safe is your application when someone is logging in maybe i will log in first then you give me access to certain resources you log in then you can access your email right so if it is an app on your phone that whole process of logging in that whole process of accessing your bank through an app. So is that app tested, you know, uh, by pen testers so that uh, it can be validated? Yes, it is safe. They have taken care of all the, uh, they have dotted all the I's uh, and, and basically made sure that it, it works properly. So we have a course called Pen Test Plus that addresses that particular angle. So in any security uh, sorry, any any deployment that you have, that is something that is relevant. Pen testing. If you're a security practitioner, that's something that uh, needs to be done. Uh, now, uh, besides this, we also have, um, I, I alluded to it earlier, uh, an aspect of monitoring for threats, right? If you are in certain sectors, banking again, financial sector, if uh, you have an app that is giving people loans, uh, an app that is uh, offering whatever kind of service. Uh, you don't just create the app and you're happy that you've deployed, people are using it. You need to constantly check uh, whether there are any threats uh, that can be exploited through your app. Uh, let, let's talk about industry. Uh, we know about the, the scamming that goes on. We know about um, the services that we use in social media and so on. So there are very many vulnerabilities that get exposed um, and you know on an ongoing basis. So what needs to happen if you're in a certain sector, let's say the financial sector, there needs to be a team within that bank, within that entity that does nothing else but monitor what are the latest threats. This threat happened in country X. 
this country X is a neighbor to uh, you know your your branch your your branch network or or your HQ. So if that is happening, uh, like we say in Swahili, uh, is that how it goes? Uh, you should also get ready. When you see your friend is getting a haircut, you should equally be ready. So uh, now this leads me to that other question that was asked about difference between security plus and CYSA plus. So the CYSA plus is cybersecurity analyst. Now, this is the next step after you do your security plus. This CYSA, cybersecurity analyst, is that role I'm describing of, you're in this bank, and in this bank, you are not just in the IT department, but you are in a specific role of cybersecurity analysts. You analyze uh, the different systems that are there, and you are also aware of the industry, you are aware of the applications that you have, and you constantly monitor them and you give reports about anything coming up from our infrastructure, from the kind of investments we have, and what needs to be done, right? Uh, so that is the difference between uh, Security Plus and CYSA. CYSA is security analyst, where you are very focused on the threats, uh, mitigation, uh, and aspects of what needs to be done after. Uh, or if this happens. Uh, Security Plus is the entry level where you're looking at the how. You know, which areas do you monitor? What do you need to look into? What do you need to secure? Uh, so after this, we have another level of CompTIA that um, CompTIA certification, uh, which is now, we, we call it Security Practitioner, C-A-S-P, all right? Um, Advanced Security Practitioner. Now, this is a level that is extremely relevant uh, because you are looking at someone who understands the technology, but they can also speak policy of an organization. Let me give you an example. When you join certain companies, you are told you cannot come in with your phone. You're told, do not bring flash disks here. You're told, do not use this machine for anything else apart from accessing this application. Those are policies in organizations, right? Because if they do not set up those structures, uh, then there's going to be chaos, right? Can you imagine if your telco, um, you, you, you are working for a telco and you are allowed to go there and look up, hey, I have this friend, uh, I tried to borrow money from them, they told me they do not have, and then because you're working at the telco, you decide, I have their number, can I look up their mobile money balance to see if they were lying to me? Uh, just picture that scenario for a moment. So such things are implemented through policy, right? Now, we are talking about the role in an organization that is able to speak these two languages. Language, one is, I understand technology. I understand the threats that are coming up. I understand technology A to Z. On this other hand, they are able to speak in English to the C-level of the organization. They're able to speak to the CEO, financial controller, and they speak English where, by, by English I mean, they simplify that, We've had this many threats as an organization. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to implement. We need to tighten our policy here or there. We need to get someone to look into compliance of about our data. So that role, all right, is the role that is played by someone who is an advanced security practitioner, right? That is where CASP plus comes in. Comptia is working towards uh, the next level of this particular role, uh, and we are going to be releasing something new next year. Uh, so this is not going to be a very complete path for people who want to practice uh, a cybersecurity. They want to get into a cybersecurity career. Uh, that's something that's uh, still going to be developed. So as CompTIA, we constantly do that. We review all our content, um, uh, course content, every three years to just make sure that it is updated. And if you get certified today, 
after three years, that certification will not be valid unless now you do uh, the new exam based on the objectives that are updated or you do a higher uh, a higher exam, right? So yeah, I hope I have answered that uh, clearly. Yes, you have spot on. So I, I hope uh, people who had questions around like which certification levels, like where do I start? And how do I grow through the ladder? I hope those questions have been answered uh, by Benjamin. And one thing that uh, someone else has asked, are these certifications free? No, they're not. And that's where now Moringa School comes in. So uh, like Benjamin has said, the security plus uh, course is like your step one if you want to get into the cybersecurity field. And we'll be offering this um, through our 18 weeks bootcamp. Um, and the certification exam is highly discounted. You can compare it even uh, with other institutions that are offering it in the market. And you find that at Moringa, we are gonna provide you with a comprehensive um, training. So I hope you've caught that. And we'll be telling you more about this bootcamp program where we'll be training you on cybersecurity, preparing you to sit for that security plus certification later on. So we are coming to the end of our panel discussion. Lisio, someone has asked, I'm a software engineer, but I want to get into cybersecurity. Do you mind sharing with us your journey and also your part in short on what you see happening um, um, in the cybersecurity field in terms of like, are there jobs, are there opportunities uh, for people to grow in this industry. So how did you start and what do you see happening in the future when it comes to careers in cybersecurity? Thank you very much. Um, uh, for me, I started out actually as a mobile developer, creating apps for Microsoft Windows, Windows Phone. Uh, you remember the Nokia Lumias? Then I ventured into uh, software engineering now, uh, web development. And went back now to mobile, this time in Android, where I created apps for uh, uh, myself and a couple of companies. Then also delved in into technical writing for various publications and as well as my blog. Before now, I uh, entered into cybersecurity. So I have quite a vast uh, amount of experience switching from being a software developer to cybersecurity. And uh, what I can say is uh, use your software development, development skills to your advantage. Your skills in coding, debugging, and problem solving will be valuable in uh, cybersecurity. And also focus on the aspects of software development. So these are secure coding practices and how to design secure systems. So, uh, and... Uh, as well, uh, look for opportunities to get involved in cybersecurity projects. These involve an uh, uh, open source project or working in a security team, uh, volunteering for organizations as well. Uh, there are various careers. Could be a cybersecurity analyst, uh, where you'll be on the defensive side. Uh, you can also be a penetration tester, where you'll be on the offensive side of things. And uh, there are also careers in... Uh, um, governance, risk, and compliance. This involves uh, less uh, technical work, but more of the implementing of policies for governments and organizations. Or you can also uh, become a teacher or, uh, in cybersecurity. There are, so the opportunities are wide. And I'll, I'll let me share a cybersecurity roadmap in the chat. There's a very good link from NIST uh, that offers a cybersecurity roadmap. Let me just share that in chat. So I believe that will be helpful. Yeah, right there. So you can go to that link and uh, you can view the various cybersecurity pathways. Okay, thank you so much, Licia, for sharing um, your journey. Barracks, I hope you have been um, answered. <laughs> you can see that it's possible for you to apply uh, your software engineering background. It does not limit you. So upskill, you know, upskill with our bootcamp, 
upskill in this and, and get certified um, as a cybersecurity specialist as well and contribute to open source projects. One thing that I've heard um, Lisio mention is around like volunteer, okay? So in Ito Kujituma here in Kenya, <laughs> you just can't wait for opportunities to land on you. So you can volunteer in open source projects that are happening globally. Um, even here locally, when you see these hackathons, um, CTF challenges happening, just go uh, present your skills and opportunities will find you. Um, so Sharon is asking, are there any free CompTIA certificates? Maybe Benjamin, you can just address this. And, and and highlight where Moringa comes in as an authorized training partner for the CompTIA um, programs. And then also just give us your parting shot, even as we come to the end of this um, panel discussion. Right. Um, you've heard of the phrase, there's no free lunch. So uh, there are no free CompTIA certifications, uh, but with an authorized CompTIA partner like Moringa, you can come to them and uh, uh, not just, not just uh, uh, how can you say? Uh, we say in Swahili, you, you don't come empty handed, the, the direct translation. So if you come to Moringa, you approach Moringa and you say, uh, we are interested in a particular CompTIA course, but we would like to try it. Uh, then uh, Moringa as a partner of CompTIA uh, have the ability to do this for you, all right? Where you get to like sample how something works. Uh, so that, that can be done. However, I think based on the plans for this class that is coming up, uh, there, there is uh, maybe some uh, uh, activities that are yet to be revealed, maybe to the, I don't know, 10th person signing up, uh, they're going to get something a little extra. Uh, so uh, I would speak to Moringa and see what exactly do they have in store for those of us who are going to enroll. Now, um, if... I can uh, now look into my parting shot. I would say that security, cyber security, is not something you can ignore if you are in technology. You cannot afford to ignore it. By that I mean, cyber security, whether you are you are a risk analyst, you are a governance expert, you are a project manager. Uh, you use some form of technology tools to get your role, uh, you know, to, to do work in that role you're given. So cybersecurity is simply an area you cannot afford to ignore. Now, that said, uh, what we can help you through Moringa, uh, what you can help you to do is to create an awareness about if you're targeting a particular role, like I'm glad about uh, the question that was asked and answered earlier about, I'm a software developer, right? And uh, do I still need to do security? So those are good questions that are coming. I like them. I hope we can have uh, maybe a different session to interact further. But what Moringa are helping you to do is basically to share with you, this is what the uh, cyber landscape is looking like. This is how you can prepare yourself. This is how you can be part of it, how you can make yourself remain relevant in your career or how you can start uh, basically strategizing for your career from the cybersecurity front. Uh, so as CompTIA, we are there to support and work with Moringa so that uh, those benefits come to you uh, so that you make the right choices, the right decisions when it comes to your next steps. Uh, there is a question again, about CompTIA and CISSP. Now, uh, you need to be more specific. Um, but again, maybe this is uh, just some food for thought uh, for Sasha for our next sessions. We have not, we, we our focus today was on 
cybersecurity generally. We did not mm -hmm. go to specific certifications uh, because from Comtia, we are so free. We tell you, okay, this is Security Plus. These are the equivalent certifications. What do you get in Security Plus? What do you get in these other certifications, right? We can go to that depth. So the certification you have mentioned there is CISSP. And what I can say about CISSP, uh, but you did not clarify which comp tier course uh, that you are referring to, because I've mentioned quite a number. I talked about Security Plus, I talked about um, Pentest Plus, uh, CASP Plus, and CYSA Plus. So there are quite a number. Uh, so each, what you need to understand is each certification has got a specific purpose. From a CompTIA perspective, we focus on what uh, skills are required for a specific job role, okay? What competencies, number two, do you need to showcase if you appear for an interview on that role, all right? So that's why I was saying that uh, CompTIA will, uh, I, I will like now on my day to day, I may speak to someone in charge of learning and development in an organization, someone who is in HR. They are not techie. My role is not to make them become a techie, but to help them understand if you're hiring for this role, then this is what you should look for. These are the skills, these are the competencies. To that person who is in charge of a government ministry and they are looking at maybe there are uh, a thousand people in tech in different roles, I work with them to say, if you're looking at role X, role Y, these are the skills and competencies as far as the industry, right? And CompTIA plays a role in part A, part B, and others will take care of other aspects of the competencies and skills. So cutting uh, short remains, do not sit pretty if you're in technology without thinking about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity uh, has to come in in a way, in a way, shape, or form. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Benjamin and Licio, for that um, very um, educative, eye-opening, and impactful discussion. Thank you for sharing your insights and experience um, in the industry, and also your uh, tips uh, for those who are getting into this field. Um, so before we go into the next, um, kind of like the next part of our agenda, where we'll be giving you an overview of this new bootcamp that we've introduced at Moringa and why you should sign up. Licio, um, you are a testament that you don't need a master's in cybersecurity to actually become a cybersecurity engineer. So could you kindly um, answer this question? If I do this at cybersecurity certification, do I have to do a master's um, in it? And why sh should someone uh, opt for it or not opt for it? Um, uh, thank you, Sasha. I think it uh, basically just comes out, uh, down to one's preferences. Um, uh, you are guaranteed a job with Security Plus if uh, because uh, I think this uh, certification guarantees one for a junior uh, cyber security analyst job. If you want to advance further, you can also do masters. So uh, I think it just comes down to one's preferences. Okay, all right. So Kelvin, um, I think you have been answered and if you need more guidance, please join our program. Because <laughs> um, we do have those career sessions um, and kind of like graduate support just to help you like make these decisions, like what next after going through an intensive bootcamp or like a short course. Um, yeah, so at this point, allow me to um, invite um, our admissions um, lead for cybersecurity. Her name is Jerusha, and she will just uh, take us through uh, what this program is all about and how you can sign up, why you should sign up for it. Jerusha, please take it up. Uh, 
Thank you, Sasha. Uh, that is quite an insightful session there. I believe uh, everybody has a takeaway home with it. So uh, our bootcamp, uh, the CompTIA bootcamp, is a 18 weeks course. Uh, it's a full-time class that will be running from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. The fee for this course is 200,000, though for this new in, uh, this intake, we have a discount for it. Uh, the fee will be 170,000. Uh, this is quite a, a good discount for someone who's looking to joining us. Uh, this is your chance. Don't let it slip away because the next intake will be 200,000. Uh, mm -hmm. Our target audience for this course, uh, like you've heard from Lucy and Benjamin, it's basically anyone who's looking to either switch career, uh, anyone who has an IT background, uh, networking, software engineering, or any computer background, someone who just wants to uh, upgrade in their career or maybe switch uh, their career. So if you have any interest in cybersecurity, this is the course for you. And like you've heard from uh, our speakers, you do this course, you have a high chance of uh, growing in your career and also venturing into new uh, technology, tech, uh, tech world, which is you'll have a good certificate from us that will propel you in whichever direction you want to go. The benefit of studying with us is we you'll have access to uh, our our mentors. You'll have uh, a full access to our mentors. They're going to be there to help you uh, through the session. Uh, we offer a certificate uh, and our learning in a practical and project-based kind of learning. Um, this means basically we teach you what is uh, market. We make you, we prepare you to be market ready, job ready. So our course is tailor made in a way that we give you what is recent, what is uh, in, currently in the market right now. Yeah. So you, it is practical, it's hands-on. It's not just textbook based. You'll have access as well to industry re relevant cybersecurity labs and projects. You'll also do Try Hack Me labs. Uh, you, uh, I mentioned you'll have our dedicated mentors to support you in case you need any extra support. Our, our mentors are very ready to set up extra classes for you depending on your need uh, to help you in whichever direction so that you catch up with the class and get the education you came for. Uh, the benefit of studying with Moringa is uh, we are not an examination center for the CompTIA, but because of our partnership, uh, we are a certified delivery partner, which gives us the privilege of offering a discounted examination voucher of $176 instead of $300, which is the current market rate. So if you study with us uh, at Moringa School, you get you. You'll, be, you'll have this benefit of doing the exam at a discounted rate, which is, a, if you ask me, that's quite a good plus. You'll also be able to get a dual certificate that is um, a Moringa certificate of completion, as well as a CompTIA certificate at the end of your course. Uh, finally, uh, the course is quite comprehensive and uh, prepared uh, by the CompTIA security, uh, CompTIA, it's also prepared by the CompTIA as Benjamin has well elaborated it. I believe uh, the, the way he elaborated it has given you more insight, insight on what CompTIA is all about and our partnership with Moringa will give you the leeway to get a hold of all that. Uh, I see some questions on the chat. We'll get back to that. All right. So at the end of the course, you'll be able to be a security consultant. You can be an uh, info information security analyst. You can be a network security engineer. Uh, you can be a computer forensic investigator. You can be an ethical hacker. You can be a security software developer. The field out there is quite broad. Once you have this certificate, and if you're looking into either upgrading it, like Benjamin said, AI won't be a threat to you. <laughs> You'll be able to venture in whichever direction that you so please. Uh, 
Next slide, please. So uh, our next course, our next intake for this uh, computer bootcamp is on September 25th. Application for the same are currently ongoing. So the application process is, uh, sorry, Sasha went ahead of you. So uh, all applications are done online on our website, that is moringaschool.com. Uh, there's a technical assessment test that's attached to the application. Nothing to scare you off. Uh, the fact that you're interested in the course means you're good enough and uh, it's a step to motivate you that you'll pass the assessment. So once you've uh, signed up, you've done the assessment and you've passed, uh, it is a uh, computer marked. So it is almost instant. You'll get the, the results almost instant. Once you get the admission, admission uh, decision, which will be via email to let you know if you've been accepted or not, and I believe you'll be, then you'll be prompted to go ahead and make payment for the class because uh, I'll advise if you're coming in, you make, uh, once you've been accepted, you make a, a quick payment because our classes fill out really fast. Don't wait till 25th of, the, of September for you to start this process. Chances of the class being filled up and closed at the time are very high. So I'll add you if you're interested, you just go ahead, apply. Once you've been accepted, you go ahead and make the payment for it. Uh, the fee sh shouldn't scare you off if you're in a position to do the full payment, that will be awesome. If not, we have an installment plan that is very friendly. Uh, you can It can be paid in two installments, in three installments or four installments. Uh, we also have a partnership with a company called Daspira that offers a SOMA loan for the Moringa program. Uh, so if you once you've signed up, you also you have a platform and uh, and different ways of making the payment. So the entire fee shouldn't scare you off. You're not expected to pay the full fee at once. You can check one of these options and pick one that you're comfortable with. I see someone says they have already done the short course. Uh, if this is the cybersecurity prep, there's, uh, and you're looking into coming in for the CompTIA Plus, there's a discount for you once you sign up and you get you get accepted for the CompTIA Plus. Uh, so the course will be in September of 25th. That is when the class will be starting. That will be on onboarding dates. Okay, thank you, Zeusha. I don't know if there are any questions for um, our admissions team. Um, I'd kindly request uh, you, Zeusha, to just share the website link, um, the direct link to where the, the cybersecurity um, bootcamp course is on our website. And people, you can go there, just see what's going to be taught in the program, what are the learning outcomes, and like your career pathway once you go through the security plus training um, and more details. Like you can download the brochure, you can see the free installment plan that Jerusha has just talked about and just plan yourself um, to join us from the September, from the 25th of September um, this month. Um, so I can see questions here around like, you know, we have people who are working and they're interested in this course and meanwhile it's full time. So for now, uh, we are offering this program as a full-time uh, bootcamp. Please allow us some time to um, see what will work best in terms of like the, um, the number of weeks, um, you know, like the part-time track and full-time track are quite different. So please, uh, for those who are able to join um, this full-time track, please go ahead and apply, take advantage of the introductory um, fee. Um, let me just go back to that slide so that you can see the kind of discount that we are offering you. So take advantage of this introductory fee, um, which is going for 170,000 Kenyan shillings, that is for tuition. And then the exam fee um, goes for 176 USD. 
like I said, the market price even for this exam certification examination fees um, is highly, highly discounted by the virtue of us being the um, an authorized training partner that we tier. So take advantage of this. If you look at the prices that are out there, you'd really, really run and get look at all the support, the kind of curriculum, all the benefits that you're gonna take a get from Moringa and take advantage of this pilot class. For those who are working, um, work is underway. Once we have a part-time program that's suitable for working professionals, um, like a full on bootcamp, we'll share with you the details online. So follow us on social media as well. Sign up to our newsletter so that you'll be the first person to receive this information once you join. Um, and I know we have alumni here in terms of like, you know, people who've gone through the prep class. Um, you guys already know the good news that we have for you. By the virtue of being an, uh, one, one of our alumni, you also get another special kind of discount. So if you've gone through a Moringa Software Engineering, Data Science, or Cybersecurity Prep course, if you sign up for this bootcamp, you get an additional discount. So please, 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 please take advantage um, of this um, introductory or rather discounted fee offer that we are offering you now and sign up. We have very, very few slots for this pilot class. So the earlier you secure your spot, uh, the better. All right, so we've come to the end of our, um, of our webinar today. I hope you guys have learned a lot from our panelists, um, you've also um, asked, you, like, thank you also for the engagement, and I hope you have also like picked up a lot from this session. Um, yeah, so we are going to share with you this uh, a feedback form um, after this, and we're just going to like ask you a couple of questions on how you found this event, and maybe other topics that you'd like us to um, to curate for you in the future. Benjamin has really like, you know, shared like two topics that I've noted down and he will be coming back um, very soon to take us through like different, um, just a deep dive on the different um, cybersecurity certifications that are available for anyone who is on this journey. Yeah, so um, for our friend um, who was not able to hear us, we'll be sending an email um, after this. So the recording will be uploaded on our Moringa School YouTube page. We'll send an email to him and everyone who has joined us here today so that you can be able to catch up on the conversation that took place here today. And cap captions will be enabled on that YouTube video. We truly, truly apologize for um, you know not preparing for that. We're gonna make sure that um, we enable that feature on our Zoom webinars for future events. We truly, truly apologize for that. And we'll send him an email because I know he can't hear us. We'll send him an email after this, just um, apologizing and sharing the YouTube recording with him. All right, so I've been your host, um, Sasha Achien, and um, yeah, we've come to the end of our session. So thank you so much for joining us and staying up to this point. I look forward to having you um, in our future webinars and even in person events. Uh, be sure to continue interacting with Moringa to our panelists. Thank you very much for sacrificing um, your evening to, you know, just create impact and give back to our tech communities, just educating them and sensitizing them to the security. Thank you very much. And I wish you guys a uh, great evening. Bye, guys.